Reset the recording. And we're on map screen. So we'll just redo the whole spiel since they just reset the mission. And now we wait. I feel like Nigeria and India should be racing to see which town actually is the scam capital of the world. <laughs> That's always where the two groups of people have the most scamming issues from in terms of countries. Ilbenek, I've seen worse self-dossing, though. Earlier days in FNF, I've definitely seen worse dosing on their own servers, that's for damn sure. Someone tried to read out their IP in a room of 100 people before. Brilliant. So I wonder if Ilbenek just removed the entire feature because of what was going on and how much information it was sending that was causing that issue in the first place. I guess this also needs I need to uh, delete the poll. And then we'll reset it later. Or I can just set it right now if it. Yeah, we'll set it for 20 minutes and call it a day. So you can hold on the bets and we'll go how things are go. Features gone? Fair. I think that's the best option for all things considered. I like the idea of it. I think a kill feed would be really, really useful, but not at the cost of, you know, <laughs> the mission being playable in the first place, right? All right. Let's be, ah, uh, one second. Okay. Let's go. So TBD, they've disabled SIM just to make sure the server loads properly. And again, we're gonna go over everything in the scenario once again. So this is TBD. We cover it once a month. Uh, every month they have, or at least I try to cover it once a month, but uh, every month they run two missions uh, with a 100 plus player base around right now. It should still be 130. Uh, and they run two rounds. This is the first round. It looks like it's a Cold War gone hot scenario on the map Samava. Uh, op 4 are going to be, I think, playing defense on the airfield up here on the top left, and we will see how things go. And righto, Ghost Wolf, I'll see how it goes, man. But otherwise, uh, Op 4, we've got a single T90 here. They've got repair and refuel ready to go. We have an MI-8 with rocket pods on the side, and it's also the gunboat variant. We see one of the two mortar uh, assets that the Op 4 player base gets. We also have an MI-28 with four rocket pods. Three out of the four are empty. Uh, but there's four racks, so, you know, four total if you do the math there. And they also have two – actually, those are missile pods, my bad, because they're guided. But we also have two rocket pods, and then they've got their auto cannon up top. And then over here, we've got a gas uh, with a base plate of a mortar. I think they just loaded up because they're special forces. Op 4 also do have two Cromit static launchers that they can bring around. We also have a military base over here. I think these are the positions that – uh, Op 4 is specifically defending and Blue Force trying to take, but otherwise Op 4 has two BMP-3s, multiple gases that are unarmed. We have a sit-down Igla chair. Pretty sure this rocket pod is here for show, but it does have the rocket in it. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, we've got some quad bikes in play. I think these are the Cromit teams because we see that gun backpack, and we see one that's assembled right there. All right. 
another 30 seconds before the round officially begins. Also, two of these gases are armed with uh, HMG and GMG capability, but otherwise it's just mainly Russian forces. And their commander, I believe, is still Sam. Blue Force commander is going to be Azuki. Uh, and otherwise, they've got a sniper team on a quad bike already out and about. Op 4, meanwhile, they do have an MRZR crew. It looks like a sniper team with a 338. Uh, and we also see another weapon there. However, it's still rendering. I think that's an SVAL. Uh, but otherwise, Blue 4, their main vehicles include multiple MRAPs, three that have M2 Crow systems, one with a Mark 19 GMG. Oh, we've got two M240 Humvees as well. Uh, there is a PSYOP, uh, S-I-P, I guess. I just call it the PSYOP because it's funny. Uh, but basically, a Command Humvee, they've got an M240 uh, MRAP as well. They've got two Bradleys with tow systems, and then they got two Abrams tanks. Uh, they also have an Apache and a Venom gunship with two rocket pods. The Venom is back here. You see the two rocket pods on the sides. The game just doesn't want to render everything right now. And then you got the Apache over yonder. In the previous round, this thing was shot down earlier, so we'll see if they get another try with it. But you can see they've got the rocket pods and they've got the uh, four AGMs and then their own uh, cannon there. Why no aim for the helicopter? Because that would be too easy for the helicopters to be able to shoot each other down with those. All right, but otherwise, Blue 4 deploying. Op 4 probably just going to play very uh, good defense along the military bases they have to defend in their spawn. And Blue 4 is going to probably take their sweet time to actually get up into the AO. There was also another spawn point here for a Gaz, but they are opting just to push north instead. MI8 is deploying. Uh, the 28 is still grounded. What are my thoughts on Homeworld 3? <laughs> we have a second because the round uh, just began. I'm going to be honest. It needs some more time in the oven, but I'm very excited for it. But the UI definitely needs to be allowed to, you know, customize more of the features on it and key them to the buttons you want. I'm going to be honest, once I got used to the button controls, it was really fun. Uh, it just took me a while. And I think the War Games aspect definitely has a lot of, uh, it has a lot of potential. And I'll be curious to see what other levels they come with it. But I know it ends Monday, uh, tomorrow. So I do want to stream at least one more time tomorrow with Metro or somebody else. But it's pretty fun. Do I still play Dark Side? Yes, I took a break from it because I have kind of got taken over by Pal World. <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, we'll get that back into the streaming. Because, again, I do have a mission. Or not a mission, a Sound Bites uh, thing tied to it. And we'll be uh, going with that. But we'll see how things go. My Spectre UI doesn't work. Uh, I don't know if there's a specific button I have to hit, but at this point, Ilbanek, based off of everything else that's happened, the missions already had been preset, I am fine with working with this. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I don't think it's possible for me to tell what type of pylon or um, hellfires that it has, but, you know, we can just wait and see. Definitely something to fight against the armor pieces, though, because I think that's what both sides are supposed to have. So, okay, that's fair. I think that's Ilbanek uh, telling you that, because I did just hit the K button to see, but yeah. Yeah, Hellfire's K, exactly. I'm like, oh, that's the button toggle. Let's go. But yeah, no, it's the K model. I just forget what the Ks represent. But yeah, uh, this week is just going to be all about rebalancing my schedule and showing you guys a lot of the armor projects that we've had in the oven and getting them finalized for this week. And the next week, hopefully the schedule gets completely finalized and we'll see how things go. You found where Love Anders spawned and now you want an atomic bomb. <laughs> I haven't because I've been busy hopping on many different uh, of my friends' worlds and not really starting my own. Because I know if I start my own, I'm just going to get lost in it. But, no, I've just been having fun basically just bringing back a bunch of ore and helping my friends level as I just kind of do my own exploring and, you know, make sure there's a base set up and whatnot. And filling a base with catrices for funsies, you know. That's how it ought to be done. Or Lunaris's. But anyway... <laughs> It doesn't, but I saw a trailer where they're going to be adding more things. So you got to remember, that game's in early access, technically. And that's the that's the crazy thing about it. 
That's one of the most well-polished early access games I've seen released in a hot second. Alright, otherwise, Op4 definitely deploying around. They're trying to hunker down on the open fields here. We'll probably see another line deployed right here to hunker on those areas. You got some recon forces right here to cover that far left side because they don't want Blue 4 to utilize the forest on that spot. I'm going to be honest with this AO, it's very easy to catch the enemy in the open ground as they move up. And I think Op4 is going to utilize that to their entire advantage here. Blue 4, meanwhile, you see they're kind of all going around in this one direction. I don't want to call the directions out specifically, but... Yeah, and then you've got helicopter support, overwatching. We got the helicopters in open areas a few kilometers from each other. The MI-8 also taken off, and it's going a different direction. Interesting. But yeah, no, Blue 4, they're going to be doing like a whole map move around here. So we're probably not going to see anything important happen for at least 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, MI-8 is high up there. Holy shit. I can't even begin to tell you where the dam. Looks like the Apache's trying to gain altitude, maybe because it spots the, uh, spotted the MI-8 and it's slowly trailing away. Or, I mean, they could just be getting altitude to cover uh, Blue Force advance and just do reconnaissance. But yeah, if you guys have any other questions, comments, concerns, feel free to bring them up. I mean, we're going to be answering them for the uh, next little bit, so. Right out, Dwarf. Have a good one. But I thought maybe the Apache noticed the MI-8, but I think the Apache is literally just trying to watch the route here. That would be really funny, though, if I saw an, uh, an MI-8 actually jump an Apache here. They're right above and below each other. da dun <laughs> Let's see if the Apache circles around, and then we'll check the map again in a moment. As you might want to go see a doctor, buddy. I don't think either aircraft have radars, so... Oh. Never mind, they do. He just detected them. And the MI-8 doesn't detect it. Oh, balls. He needs to keep gaining altitude. Because he's not going to be able to have a stable firing platform if he keeps having to raise up like that. And I can't tell if he noticed that he had something on his tail there. Looks like he just has the uh, RPG ready to go. Oop. It's not letting me select him. There we go. Yeah, so I think they lost it on tracking because the MIA quickly pulled out after realizing it was being followed. You gotta be careful how close they inch up though, because we do have some forces like right on the border here, and it's hard to say. Yeah, they do have the Igla out. I think they're looking at the MI-8 though, funny enough. It's funny though, because the Apache's right above them. 
We got a little bit of blood right here. I was about to say, did he backblast? I would have heard a missile launch. At least I thought I would have. But yeah, no, the MI-8 is flying right over the airspace here. I wonder if the 28 is going to come around and assist. Where is the 28? Oh, God, he is. Oh, okay, so he just duked it out with the, uh... The paratrooper team, which was back here in the Venom gunship. I didn't even notice that. That was on the top right of the map. All right. Apache, though, is coming in for the kill. Getting very close to that MI-8. They're getting into firing range. He's right behind him. He should be able to get a hit here. There it is. MI-8's going down. His engines are on fire. I think he's going to explode in a moment. There it is. Now the question is, can this guy get away before... Oh, I think a man pad just launched and hit him. I'm not hearing any warning klaxons going, though. So funny that both attack helicopters have taken out both sides uh, utility choppers. Waiting to see if there's going to be another missile launch. He might get out of here scot-free, though. Yeah. I think he's out of Igla range. He's flaring, though, so he might be getting a lock-on warning. Yep, there it is. It just went by. I think he's going to be out of there. I'm just waiting to see if the 28 comes around. But it looks like it's still heading south. Meanwhile, Blue 4 have deployed a majority of their forces around. So again, it's going to take things a hot second. the MI-28 doing. What I want to check on him is did he use rocket pods to get that kill or did he use his gun? I don't see any clear holes on the launchers like I do these. I'm looking at the rockets specifically. So he might have gotten it with the main gun. And it looks like they're just scanning the edge of the map at the moment with that gun. Yep. Now, I'm not sure they have thermal optics. Uh, they normally do, but I'm not sure if they were removed on the vehicles for balancing reasons, but they're definitely probably scanning the edge to make sure that no one's riding the border of the map. Oh, the Apache's coming in, though. Does he have her on radar? Yep, they're tracking her. It's going to be a, uh, a redo of the fight. Last time, the Apache lost because it was too busy utilizing its guns, but now it might try to use its rockets instead. We'll see if she makes a dagger cut in. 28, I don't think, has detected her. Who do we have on the airfield? Do they have any AA capability? No. I want to see if this thing is going to blow them away. Oh, 
Oh, come on, look on the airfield. Nope, they're adjusting. He's not going to see him. Bro's getting his launcher <laughs> Besides, nah, fam. I'm getting a little ballsy with it now. Patch is trying to cut distance to get within weapons range. Maybe. Now I think they're just looking for it. There's the guns going. They got a hit on the tail. More hits. Oh, I think they just got the punch out. Yep. And there's the MI-28 down. And funny enough, you have Blue 4 right here to shoot at the pilots here because one of them's Uncon. And Jet gets hit in the head. Wow. Gotta love war crimes, right? <laughs> So now Blue 4 has air superiority with their Apache, and we still have a few moments left on betting. I'm not sure how much that the game is going to change based off of Blue 4 having a single Apache, because normally air support doesn't change that much uh, for the entire round when you have a lot of people like this. However, this could be that rare exception. Otherwise, we'll just have to see how things go. And we could see the co-pilot still wake back up, but we'll just have to wait. Apache's also done a good job of waving off Iglas. I think they took an Igla hit, but it was a weak hit because it didn't really result in uh, any damage from what I could see. Maybe a bit of damage to the tail rotor, but the Apache clearly still has control of everything. I guess Blue Force waiting on their vehicle support to come up before they make their push because they've been kind of sitting in that same position for a while. So we also have this, I believe this is the sniper team trying to infiltrate at the moment. Yeah, so they've got the, they got a suppressed 5.56 rifle with the tack sack, yes. Ah, don't you love it when they put a bear of balls on your suppressed rifle? <laughs> and then of course they have the, uh, the 50 cal. M107. I think she's playing chicken now. So at this point, they're going to wild weasel the Apache and try to draw out fire from the tree lines to make them think. There's an AA launch. You see the round went completely over. That's the thing about the Igla. If you just do a sharp turn, the Igla usually loses lock anyway. Another launch. That one gets a hit. And her tail's out. All she has to do is land by triple R, get that repair, and she can go back into the AO, though, so. Real world, if an Igla hits your tail, it would literally make your tail fold in, and then you'd be in a death spin, essentially, so. Eh. Ah, yes, the burb. Ah, the burb is close to Bread King, because Bread King has the bread that the burb wants. I see. So Op4 has weaponized birds as reconnaissance. That's interesting. But yeah, they're going to probably go back to the airbase and grab Triple R. We have a Bradley and a truck over here, but it looks like they're being ordered to pull back. And now we're just essentially waiting for Blue 4 to make their advance. Is it a drone? Of course. I said it's a bird, right? All birds work for the bourgeoisie and are therefore government surveillance drones. Easy.
of the Apache just kind of going around. I don't know where they potentially brought the Triple R Vix. That looks like it's an MRAP. A little bit of blood, so someone has maybe a minor wound and hasn't noticed yet. And then you got the main force still forming up around here. Looks like this is where they have the fuel Triple R Vic. I don't know where the repair one is. It's tucked away back here, so the Apache's going to have to land by this position to get that Triple R. Well, it looks like they're keeping it in the air. As long as they keep a decent forward momentum, they'll be fine. But they can choose the land and, you know, debug uh, zones over here to then get the uh, repair out to then fix the main rotor. Because the issue is when you're trying to land in a tight LZ but don't have a tail rotor to stabilize yourself, uh, you might death spin into the trees. But it looks like the Apache doesn't really care and is uh, continuing to just drive around or fly around. So, mm. weird call, but that's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. Now we just have to wait. It's doing a... That is a very long range run. The rounds aren't even ranged up. More shots coming in. Another Igla launch. It's going to go head on. And that's another hit. Another launch. Another hit. Their engine's uh, out. They're coming in way too hard. That's going to crash. No, the engine might not be out. Yeah, there it goes. And those are trees. So again, I don't know why they didn't just repair the tail damage. The yeah, engine was fine. Uh, yeah, no, it, that makes sense. The engine didn't immediately cut out, but they ran out of fuel, so they had to do some sort of landing. But all right, neither sides now have air support. I don't think that gun run got any op four kills. Oh, I might have spoken too soon. Oh, he's over here, though, so I think that was just a mishap. Yeah, so now the game is pretty much going to be neutral. Both choppers kind of traded out. Both sides don't need AA anymore because you can't even really use it against ground assets to any sort of effect. Looks like Blue Force sending a reconnaissance vehicle. They've got most of their stuff remounted, and they're going to start pushing into the AO. Ah, now we wait. So we have a Crow's MRAP coming up. This is just a single driver, so it's the most riskless thing they can do. They also took an MRAP. Looks like they're just off-roading it, but they will eventually have to cross a river. Oh, no. Vehicles can easily jump that. So with this being an unarmed MRAP, it's literally just to kind of re uh, recon the route. I get why they chose the bridge to hold it here, but that's a very small bridge. So we could just see Blue 4 bypass the entire Op 4 defensive line. You've got Kruk over here. I think he heard that vehicle drive by. So he might have called that in. Don't want to flame, but that heli was useless. Yeah. 
I get what he was doing, but at the same time, there is... How do I word this? There is wisdom to once you guarantee that your enemies are completely taken out, you can then keep your chopper in the back line and then just use AGMs or use, you know, long range fire to suppress a position as you then have other assets go ahead. So I think these guys here, the car driving by, they're trying to grab their RPGs, but. Yeah, he can literally drive so fast that he goes right over the ditch. Oh, he might get AT'd here, though. It missed. Well, if he's smart, he's not going to dismount here. Instead, he's probably going to try to pull away. So we got away with that. Relatively unscathed, just a few shots, but now you got the rest of the vehicles coming over. I just wonder if all of them can traverse the forests properly, and then when we get to the heavier stuff that won't have the momentum to jump the rivers like that, what's gonna happen to them if they get stuck? But yeah, most, most PvP matches, the really fun stuff, like the planes and jets, will get burnt in the first 15 to 20 minutes of the round, because... You know, people don't want to wait. See, if he wasn't slow to reload, the RPG-26 he had is a single-shot disposable weapon, so he only had one shot, and he missed. So, not much he could do about that. Funny enough, Op4 only has their commander on the defensive objective. Everyone else is out and about, so theoretically... Uh, Tarantino could, like, rush in and take the sectors on his own. He might even go over to this airfield to check out if there's anything on it. You got Op4 Triple R back there. Technically Double R because there's no rearm. It's just refuel and repair. And then the stealth team could also sneak in. That would be really, really funny if Blue 4 just snuck in and took the objectives. <laughs> oh, hey, look at this. Why is the company HQ Humvee ahead of everyone? Op4 has the potential to snipe Blue 4 Command, but it looks like their AT was misplaced. And they might be able to get away. Ain't that something? We'll see if Zicky tries to reposition, because there is that other bridge over there. Wait. Yeah, no, they're just... <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Alright. That is a single Humvee down and a single kill for Zicky. We'll see if uh, other vehicles coming up. That is going to alert them, though. Let's see what other vehicles Zicky can get in this silly little convoy. No, it's only a VL warhead, so it might not be able to do a lot of damage to the tank unless he gets it right on the rear. Oh, he hit it dead on. Actually, it did cause a damage texture change. Does he have more rockets, though? He does. And it cooked off. Oh, my God. So he has sniped a tank already. I've never seen a VL rocket hit a tank that easily. He hit it in the perfect position then. He's got another one. 
I don't see this one as damaged as the other one, so I don't see it cooking off, but wow. That's wild. Might be see the vehicles moved around on the other side. He just doesn't want to get killed, so he's going to go into concealment instead. And then the other tank has definitely backed away. Bradley's now trying to put Overwatch down. Oh, and it looks like the tank spotted him and just sniped him in the bushes. <laughs> but he got a tank kill, so in terms of trading, that's a pretty good call. You have another vehicle here. Another Humvee was taken out. I'm assuming that was from Crook. Yeah, he uh, either got it with a GL or a uh, single shot disposable. I didn't even hear that explosion. So Blue 4 taking some pretty early attrition casualties here. And you're going to definitely see Op 4 reposition their forces on the left. Tanks now heading in. This force has moved up. We're having a little bit of a scuffle here. But these guys do have a mortar. So will they utilize the mortar? That's going to be their ace in the hole here. It's just, can they get shots on target? I'm waiting to hear it. not he might not have the right ammo for it or what but I mean mortaring this position could result in some pretty hefty casualties looks like they got the kill on the one guy over there because this is the crow system so they can just zoom in yeah they do have thermals too so they're just gonna <laughs> murder whatever's in front of them with it shots in to be safe but again I'm surprised we're not hearing the uh, mortar firing off there but you see op fours reset their defensive line but these guys are staying dismounted I'm still worried that blue four even though they've taken some pretty uh, hefty attrition they could still break through and get to the objectives themselves Sam has also pulled off of that position he's in a Vic so we could see twig and Imper just sneak into the objectives and take them simultaneously Yeah, if Sam rallies his forces and redeploys them, wouldn't that be underwhelming if we saw a spec op team just go in and hit the objectives? <laughs> and Op4 put everything in a distant firefight. I mean, that that would be unfortunate, but that's a lesson there. All right, mortars and GMG rounds coming into this AO here. We need to see the rounds get walked in. I think the GMG is at its maximum range. So that can't be brought in anymore, and there's a Blake in the way. Uh, but the mortar could be moved, and it looks like they're adjusting that. But they're having everyone mount uh, the rounds in. It looks like they have taken damage from the mortar. There is one kill there. And they're walking the rounds more to the right, and everyone else is trying to mount up. And you can see that they're actually shooting at him right now. And they're still putting the mortars there. Cancer is definitely panic firing. And people are dismounting to try to help him. Alright. Looking at the rest of the map here. Yep, that position pulled off. The closest thing would be that uh, Kermit launcher. Mortar firing again. GMG has now ranged on the vehicle. Vehicle's firing, though. You're seeing multiple knockouts over here. And kills. Good call for that crow weapon platform. Trying to see if they're getting any more. Mortars, though, are walking in closer and getting more knockouts, so they got to be careful. Funny enough, though, we have a single Tarantino's come back, and he's trying to sneak in. He's not suppressed, but 
He could come around and pick the mortar off. I think it's one of those quieter ones, though. See that the round's ready. It's a very quiet thunk compared to other mortars we've heard. But yeah, these two are still infiltrating, and it is Twig King. Twig King would definitely go for it if he doesn't see any defenders. But he's going to be very cautious about pushing in. Want to see if Tarantino finds Sheriff here and gets the kill. He might just go right in for the mortar position, though, and that's going to give Sheriff an opportunity to pick him off. Oh. Good headshot by Tarantino there. I think Andre just heard those shots, though. But he's, no, nah, he's none the wiser. He's going to go for the mortar position. More mortars going out. Looks like there's another KIA. Yeah, they've just been plastering the side of the hill. At least the crow launcher's been able to get some hits there, but they're going to have to bring the vehicle over, load up the wounded, and pull back to friendly positions there. And they can't seem to pick up a good amount of speed. Got a good chunk of blue four across. The vehicles are still lagging behind. Oh, the crow found another victim. Yeah, they killed one guy, and Toxic taking fire. He's stuck in a rocket launcher animation, and he gets killed off as well. Ooh, it's tough to get stuck in those uh, AT positions, because when you have a launcher, um, you just kind of get stuck moving with it. You have to immediately put it on your back and run, but yeah, it's not the case for these guys today, unfortunately. That gunner is Papaya. Look at, look at that seven kill count right there. He's trying to honk to get him to go. He doesn't want to move. Mercy needs to drag him over to the vehicle and get him loaded up. It looks like uh, <laughs> Tarantino, I guess he can't hear the mortar being launched because it's so quiet, so he's just sneaking out with that vehicle. Yeah, and you have Twig. Yeah, I bet you they just looked from the hillside and they didn't see anything, so they're just going to walk right in. I would not be surprised. Looks like Sam is realizing he might need to rally his forces. He's actually driving back at the moment. That'd be funny if Blue Four intercept, kill Sam, and then take the objectives. <laughs> Op Four trying to set up defensive lines here, but the Crow system. We'll see if they continue to stay set up because he could pick off more infantry over here. As we now have Blue Four infantry coming in, but this is where the main fighting is going to be, and we still have some Op Four aggressors in between, potentially ready to ambush and uh, kill more. Twig might wait for uh, Imper to be in position. They might be able to take both sectors at the same time. Sam's going to charge in. BMP3 here is going to charge in. But yeah, we're going to see both positions go under pressure. I don't know what the timer is. I think it's a 60 or a 90 second timer. But that is funny as hell. Andre is now folding into the trees. He's hiding. And the gas is moving around. You got, I thought something just fired over here. When Dooney's been knocked out, that might have been from a GMG launch. Yeah, all right. It's, it's three minutes. Imper needs to run into the sector. And now you're going to see everything fold in. Oh, but the entrance was on the other side. Oh. Now it's up to Twig King to hold. I don't think going in the tower was good. There's Sam barreling in as well. I don't think Twig's going to be able to hold it for the three minutes, but... That is quite funny. <laughs> There's the other one. <laughs> Capture stop, so I think Sam's gonna realize that, uh... oh wait, no, it stopped because Imper wasn't in the sector. Yep. So if you have a new uh, same amount in here, so it's only one guy. Definitely threw Op 4 through a conundrum here. It looks like they're going to keep trying to hold this position. 
So if Imper can get in there, he'll be fine. But I guess he's struggling to figure out how to get in there. Twig, you better believe he's going to hide in here, but as soon as they figure out he's in the tower, that BMP3 is going to annihilate that freaking tower. There's AT going in. So they're going to now clear everything. Imper staying in the corner right here. He does have a 50 cal. I don't think that's going to be able to penetrate the BMP. Now it's definitely just a wait and see. I just heard something launch. Can't tell if that was a Cromit launch or what. You have a 50 cal firing up into here. That's... To this infantry, yeah, so you see where they got hit right there. The blue four's got pretty good eyes. You got Oliver, who's gone down to another GMG of some type. You're hearing, I just heard a heavier caliber round coming. It might have been the tank firing at the infantry group down here, but now they're backing away. Some blue four were able to uh, reconvene. Oh, they might try to send in some more blue four in the enemy gas and sneak them into the town to reinforce. I think they're waiting to clear all this out and then they're just gonna order the BMP to, yep, to level the tower. That's exactly what they're doing. Twig throwing a grenade in panic. If anything, that just confirms that he's up there because all of Op4, I think, have reported that they're out of the tower. And I think he just got sniped with a random AP round and it penetrated and killed him. Oh, that's really unlucky. But these things, you can penetrate rounds into them and you saw HE detonating inside. So, oh, that sucks. So Emperor, you see he's just leaning in. He's trying to just stay hidden to come in a little later. T90 has come around as well. I wonder if they'll catch the gas. Oh, if you want to infiltrate, you need to turn in, you goobers. Cardboard's Twinkin, by the way, and he's coming in to give his own two cents. <laughs> Monkey Enjoyer just is right next to Wiki over here. That's a close engagement. It's, oh my god, they're going to drive right in front of the BMP. <laughs> they just shot 556 five, at him. No freaking way. Get the AT4 out. Suppress shots on him. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me here? Monkey's like, hey, you, you good? Now they're taking fire up here and the BMP3 is like, what's going on? At least hit the BMP3, there we go. And he just... Nice. Is there no one in the gunner seat of this MRAP to pick? Oh my god. I see, because you want to hit the T90 and they just disabled. They killed someone in it. Someone that was turned out, funny enough. Wow. Get that 50 cal crows and start doing some magic with it. I mean, dude's already on eight kills. He's scanning around looking for more.
No, 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 no. He's got a ghillie suit on. Come on, PID. Please, God, PID. Holy shit, he might have. He might have actually PID. All right, Papaya is my MVP here, man. Oh, if they reposition that 50. BMP, though, has moved around. It's putting more shots on him. Ain't that funny. And I got the sniper coming around. Not sure how well that's going to go on a point blank. Are you are you crawling? Hold up, hold up. I want to hear the live reaction from Mr. Sandwich. He's going to turn the corner. Blue Force mainly winning that CQC fight over there. They immediately take 50 cal fire, and the guy on point dies, so Infer's actually going to be able to get away with this. That's funny as hell. I'm going to quickly look back. T90's turned around. I'm having a tough time spotting it, though, I think because they still have someone dead in the vehicle. All right, nope. So now they're looking, but they've got cover. And then you had a CQC fight right here, but looks like a majority of Blue Force survived and were able to push Op4 back over here. And they're still trying to get their forces back, but you got Kasad getting on the rear of the vehicles. Does he have AT? He does. And he's honing in on the engine sounds. And it looks like the Crow system finally got hit. And, uh, yeah, a little more than hit there, Chief. Ouch. I think Papaya went to nine kills, though. That was uh, pretty decent. I think, yeah, the BMP3 basically sniped it from over here. But you have the other one in the AO as well. So that's a toughie. Kassad, though, frantically running around trying to find this uh, Abrams, though. Will he find it? I think he just did. Right on the engine block. He freaked the tank out and made it back away. It just panic fired forward, just got another hit. Knocked the engine out, give him another. And the Bradley flipped. I'm not sure if he even got that third hit there, but he dies, but at least the tank's been disabled. Crew's bailing out. Guns disabled. Ooh. I guess Zicky just got super lucky with his AT placement, but we could still see this tank cook off. Hey, I mean, if you're in a tank, you might not... Oh, balls. Well, there goes both the Blue Force tanks. Op4 still have their T90 in play. NASA trying to get around. <laughs> Raposo ain't messing around. Both of them firing their RPG-26s at NASA. If they were thermobaric RP, uh, RSGH warheads, it would be a different story, but Okay. PVP. <laughs> Grenades being thrown to try to flush NASA out. You know, most of Blue Force infantry has also been picked up here. We got a full squad down here, half a squad there. All the assets down here, the paratroopers that died earlier as well. Like, it's. Op4 still has a pretty decent chance because they folded everything on this side over here except for maybe some choice units and then. You know, they just put everything on the side. So if Op4 just keeps inflicting decent attrition, Blue 4, I don't think, will stand a chance by the time they reach the BMP3s and the T90. I think Blue 4 have to have a certain amount of manpower here to flip the Bradley, or they need to bring a vehicle up and maybe just give it a little tap. But I don't see where the other Bradley is either. So if, okay, no, it's back here.
So Raposo has been taken out. Gonzalez is running around trying to figure out where those shots are originating. He's looking down, not checking his far left though. Could get outflanked by NASA. And that's exactly what happens. NASA delivering a few headshots there. So Sam's still alive, Blue Four Command is over here, and Azuki is also still alive. We got Crook who got a vehicle kill earlier. He's got a suppressed uh, AK-74 with a GP-25 system. He could jump some of this team. So you got Blue Four kind of combing around right here, potentially thinking there might be another fight, but I mean, they need more manpower to, oh, oh God. Huh. Well, thankfully, Mr. Tree was here to save them. <laughs> I have no words. By the time the engine goes on, they load everyone up. I think Crook's gonna lose his opportunity here. Giovanni with another infantry and vehicle kill might fold back in. Command close by. Giovanni could snipe off command. Loaded RPG. They do have HE warheads as well. Tank just fired. They're striking potentially the Bradley over here because we do see some smoke. So she smoked off. Crook's got to be careful so he doesn't accidentally get run over. But it looks like the Bradley's going to now do a sharp left turn. Hopefully he doesn't hit a tree too hard and uh, get knocked around. Company HQ under threat here. Vagrant just got the kill on Giovanni. But Reacher got knocked out. And you still got Andre over here. Laying in wait on this open field. Igla does kind of give him away, though. I'm going to be honest. If you know that Blue 4 have lost all their air assets, there's absolutely no reason to keep carrying that Igla around. It just elevates your target profile when you're prone, as well as, again, you can't even use it as AT because it's not it's not that effective in Arma 3. IRL, couldn't tell you, but Arma 3, oof. Looks like he's going to move a little bit closer. And then, you know, the weight. You also don't need to carry that extra, you know, 15, 20 kilograms. But Blue 4, they got a solid force here. Op 4 still have their internal defense. They still have both BMP3s, and they have a T90. So, I don't know. Blue 4, kind of out of position with their stuff, but we'll have to see. We do have Seismo and Korvac in the open. They are a stealth team here. It's that sniper team. And I think the Bradley just spotted one of them. And now we're about to see what happens when you catch infantry in the open. Yeah. Why is there a bird? Hello. <laughs> and goodbye. You could have just 240 them, but you instead had opted for 20 millimeter rounds point blank.
Oh my god. It's like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. If we just stop moving, it won't see us, right? Right? Ron. Well, so much for that. I'm not gonna lie, though, it was pretty funny, though. <laughs> Oh my god. So about the Bradley just stared at him and was like, really? Yeah, okay. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, that tank's in a pretty decent position, though. It's got great overwatch on the far ridges, so if Blue Fort tries to put any vehicles on the ridge, they're immediately going to get sniped. And then Blue Fort has this massive open field to contend with. Their only real choice is to go north. And then swing around, take the forested route over here, and then come in. So we just have a bit of a lull again. Maybe Andre can get in and start getting some pick -offs. We have a quad bike coming around. So it's just two dudes and a quad bike. On a romantic outing through an open field, yeah. It's just again, we have the Bradleys around. I'm just waiting for something tragic to happen. These guys are the luckiest two dudes in an open field I've ever seen. I thought they'd get spotted. They're just marking where they want to go. <laughs> It'll be funny as if the T90 noticed them and then shot them. Nope, they're deciding to pull away. They don't want to go into that house. <laughs> There's probably Bradleys over here. Oh, yeah, right. We should probably not be driving in the open field. We can pretend that's what they said, right? Now they're just chilling in a forest, wondering, huh, what do we do now? I guess it's clear we didn't get shot by Bradleys. I did see Andre getting a vehicle, but he decided against it. This is the Cor uh, one of the Cormit teams, though, so they do have one of the ATGM launchers. And you got a Bradley all the way over here doing a wide out flank. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like Blue Force stalled because they don't really know how to approach this final part of the AO, and I agree with them. This is a very hard approach. I mean, you got both BMP3s set up right over here. On either side, you got the T90 supporting. I mean, this is all pretty much locked down. So Blue 4 doesn't really have good options here.
one of the crow systems coming around. That would be the GMG, but it has limited range because the Mark 19, you can only really range up to, I want to say, 600 or 700 meters with the crow. These guys got RPG 26s out, which I think can still do considerable damage to an MRAP, but not take it out fully because it's meant to be resistant against uh, rockets because it's an MRAP, mine resistant, ambush protected. So unless you get an absolutely critical hit on the engine block or whatnot, I don't think it's going to go down. And I would also assume that, yeah, some of Op4 stragglers are reporting blue for momentum. Did... Did they just rush... Ground Command just rushed a vehicle... Well, the T-90's right here. And Ground Command just found it. Yeah, T-90 per, uh... What do I say? T-90 favored its survival rather than staying and getting kills. That was smart. And then, yeah, just tell the BMP-3s to start engaging that AO instead. That was a very good call for the T-90 because its survival should be paramount. And funny enough, this was an Op4 team that took the M107. <laughs> yeah, so Blue 4 can take that back, set up here, and start sniping at the position, but they still have two BMP3s in the way. And I'm not sure we do have a single AT4 remaining. Nope, Mafo also has one. And we have a stolen RPG. Okay. So these guys should have enough AT to take on the BMPs, but they're still BMPs. And then we also have the T90 out here. I think it was checking the BMP to be safe. Something big just hit it. That might have been a tow. Yep, follow-up tow coming in. BMP3 taken out. They might not have an angle on T90. GMG rounds also came in. Shocking turn of events there. Other BMP3 trying to bombard this position. That's causing them to pull back a bit. The fact that command is rushed up here shows me that they don't really have control of the remaining infantry. However, we could see these two guys now crawl up and put RPG shots in these groups, uh, in these vehicles. However, if they're smart, they would set up the Karmit launcher and then time the shots to hit the Bradley with the Karmit and then the GMG with uh, their RPG-26s. Well, they have more toes, but they only saw the uh, BMP-3 here. They didn't see the T-90. Otherwise, I agree. I think they would have gone for the BM uh, the T-90 first. Because I think... Uh, and I think you also get two toes. So you get one for the T-90 and then one for the BMP-3, but would have been a little better to prioritize the tank. But, you know, again, they had options. But based off of what they had in the moment, that was the best play for them to make. From here, they can see the top of it. They don't have a good angle on it. Marcus, I think he's going back for the Cormit launcher. And again, a lot of Blue Force infantry are just stalled here. Could still get behind the GMG, Vic, but that would announce their presence and alert the Bradley, and I don't think they'd survive that because it's hard to do a panic shot with a Bradley under fire. Other Bradley, meanwhile, is redeployed all the way out here, scanning around. We do have one Op4 guy out here. I think he's AFK, though. Yeah, or a bot at this point. But Op4 might just lose this fight to attrition now because you don't see a lot of Op4 remaining on the field. Really, their one saving grace was all the vehicles set up in a well-defensive area, but Blue4 just rushed in on a good angle and stopped it. You know, if Mike was smart, he would start ripping the wheels off.
send in goat team six. Hey, crazy, how you doing, buddy? Hope everything's good with wait. you. Can't wait to see what other videos you've got working for me. Otherwise, hope you keep enjoying the operations. I do hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. Uh, there's no grenade in the hatch mod, and even then, I don't think for MRAPs you could open the hatches if they locked them from the inside, because they're not meant for that. Marcus has a great line on that vehicle, so if he times it with Mike, they could... Mike could fire AT into the gun seat as uh, the Bradley gets hit by the Cormit launcher. Tank is also redeploying. Don't know where. Maybe on the far hill, so it has a little bit of better cover. I Yeah, I, I agree with that call. Their enemy is coming from the uh, south and the west. Setting up to the east would probably be the best bet. That's another GMG shot that's gone out. Off to the right. I think they're just ranging it at the moment. Yeah, no, so that's like 700, 800 meters away, so they really got it. All right, Bradley gets hit. Minimal damage, though. Gun might be disabled, though. Good call there. That's definitely making the Bradley panic, though. They got the friendly gas coming in, though. That might check on that position. It is a blue for one, though. Looks like they're driving by. The position might have been abandoned or they quickly backpacked it, but they're definitely checking the rear to try to figure out what happened there. And the Bradley, it looks like it's just going around to cover the other position. However, T90 is getting into position. Might spot that Bradley and take it out. But we're just at another standstill as Blue 4 is just trying to push forces to the town to finally attack the final objectives. Yeah, I think the uh, the coronet hit the ERA plates on the side. That's why it's still partially operational. Though I don't see any plating on the side. So I guess it was just a weak hit. Maybe it hit in the, uh, the back area here. Where the... Uh, gosh, I forget. The, the, trans the APC part of the vehicle. I just heard another launch... They're firing into this tower. And they're definitely knocking people out and killing them, too. BMP3's pushed up. Firefight with uh, the command team here. Looks like, uh, yeah, only Reacher is alive. Azuki got killed off. So Blue Fork Command is dead, but I think they're having Reacher stepping up as a 2IC. But I've already seen that things are a little miscoordinated right now anyhow. So if Blue Four is able to get the asset advantage back, I think they have enough infantry to push these final sectors and take them. Because Op Four, you got in the top left corner. They were trying to set up on where they thought Blue Four was going, but Blue Four just said F it and charged to the open field. And they were able to get Overwatch with vehicles and show that that's all uncontested. Another tow launch came in. It was a miss. Bradley rounds are landing just short. There we go, and now that might be disabled. Engine blocks out. They're just gonna unload into it. And there it goes.
blue four now in the town. Op four only has three defenders on the AO. Sam needs to do his best just to try to pull everything he can in this town at this point, because I think he hears the uh, stuff going over there. But I think the tank finally found an angle. Yep, Bradley is abandoned. I think the T90 found it and put a shot in it. Yep, it had the angle. So we have a single T90 versus a single Bradley still in the field. Bradley is completely out of position, though, because it took a shot earlier from a Cornet launcher. So T90 is going to be able to hold, but I think Blue 4 have the infantry to just kind of take over at this point. Beyond that, I mean, these infantry are going to be out of play for at least 10 to 15 minutes without transport to maneuver in. But again, three guys right here, even if the T90 were to come in and do close support, I'm not sure it's going to be enough. Yeah, they're trying to cover the AO here, and they might be able to get some group snipes, but... Eh, I might walk that back. Let me look from uh, their gunner POV. I wasn't able to, uh, yeah, I can't see it from their specific site. So I just have to approximate based off of what we can see from down here. They can somewhat cover this entrance because this one's choke point over here, but that one that's facing south now, Blue Four can get in easily. T90's missing a lot of ERA on its right side. Didn't notice, I'll have a look. I don't see a lot of impacts at the moment. I think that's the exhaust area right there. But she doesn't appear super scathed. So I think she's okay for now. I saw a parachute coming down, but no. We just have uh, Blue 4 moving in, Op 4 behind them, trying to pursue. Crook has an HE round for his RPG, is well within AT range, because you can range us up to a few hundred meters. Oh, Hardcore is in a bad spot. Yeah, Crook has him dead to the rights if he decides to shoot, needs to lift it a little higher. Doesn't even have to hit him. He just has to hit the side of the hay bale. Ops not to. GP25 place would also do it. I wouldn't recommend bullets. But he does have a suppressor. He's going to opt for the GP25. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, Izuki. Hope you're okay, though. Hope the hospital trip wasn't too, too bad. But I think Blue Force is still going to win this. Yep, all right. Suppress shots win <laughs> that one. But I still think Blue 4 has way too much here, and the tank has completely repositioned. Now it's not even a spot to do any coverage. One of the three Op 4 members was just taken off. That was Kremlin. I think at this point, Blue 4 have it in the bag. I don't know. Like, looking at the map here, we've got the northern group. They're taking much more Op 4 infantry, though. Or, excuse me, 
Let me walk that back. This blue four group has the op four infantry out number two to one. We do have op four infantry coming around, but they're kind of out of position. You got the T90 to the south and a few op four infantry coming up. You got this full team over here. That guy's been AFK for a while. You got more blue four all the way on the outside, but I think blue four just have the number advantage at a two to one ratio. And I'm not sure if there's anything op four can really do to fix it. I don't think Blue Four is going to throw the match. Because at this point, there's only two defenders. Green Thumb is a medic, though, and could get Kremlin back up. But I see Blue Four at least taking this position in five minutes. This one may be a bit longer because it's got a pretty unique entry point. T90 could come up and offer point security. Half of the squad up here has just been eliminated. And doesn't look like Blue Force taking any casualties from that. Yes, you've got another Op4 team coming around, but I'm not sure that's going to be enough. Uh, there is a second round. I'm going to be honest, guys. It's going to cut it a little bit close just in case it goes to max time because there's going to be a, you know, a 15 to 20 minute period for them to get set up, save start, and then the round's going to be, you know, up to two hours. And I'm just worried that's going to get a little close to 530 because I still need to shower, get dressed. I also kind of want to take a nap for an hour. <laughs> um, but I got to be out the door around 520 or so to go pick up food and bring it back so i'm just worried about my schedule then you got sam kind of holding back here watching through the open window waiting to see what else comes up but he sees the smoke grenades coming so he knows that stuff is approaching t90 though in a decent spot they could also use the um the commander turret to snipe people off but yeah you got blue four now advancing into the sector and if two people enter it it's going to start that three minute timer So he, oh, might get Uganda. Nope, he was too slow to fold in. He was getting on top instead of inside. But otherwise, it would have, ah, no, there's a little thing in the way, too. That's a shame. But Tank is now going to be forced to play point security here. And it is a T90, so it has a lot of ERA plating around, so it could withstand a few shots. This Op4 team, eh, yeah, they're doing their best to make the ground up, but... Ah, they're quite slow. I could still see Op4 bouncing back in the final bits of PvP. You got those other Blue 4 teams. Uh, with every passing moment that Blue 4 isn't committing their entire forces in the sector, uh, I feel like it slightly ticks for Op4, but again, it's going to be very, very close. Ash takes some fire as he tries to raise some AT for that T90, but he's pushed back. I think Reforge will be handle, uh, able to handle this stuff in time. You got to remember, that's still a very relatively new game. Arma's been around for over 10 years, so there's been a lot that's gone into this. Kremlin gets picked off. I'm doing the same thing uh, Twig did in holding the tower. And he did take his weapon as well. No, someone else did. Okay. First AT hit on the tank. Was ineffective. It looks like it hit the front left. I still see the track. Another hit, though. You can see that impact point. And the tank. Almost runs Uganda over. <laughs> Holy shit.
So funny enough, now it's a static turret. But Uganda was able to, to push past. Another AT round goes in. Oh, Uganda hasn't pushed in there yet. I was about to say, you should have just seen Green Thumb. More AT fire coming in. Scanning around with that turret, but that's taken, what, four rockets now. We saw the sector, I think, under control, but then that went away, or at least under contested. But I think this is the beginning of the end. Yeah, you got the Op 4 guys coming in, but Blue 4 is going to be able to stall that group. So I think it's just up to this internal garrison that we could see Crook and Andre come in and uh, provide some assistance, but I don't know. But why? But why? Why would you disable the last? Why would you? You had a chance. You had a chance to stall and you just disabled the last thing on the T9. Why? I don't think you're allowed to steal each other's vehicles, though. Like, you can steal some types, but not the heavy stuff. Sam gets knocked out. Green Thumb firing through gets Brasis down, but because there's two knockouts... What a weird thing to do. Another AT shot. Thankfully, the gun still seems to be working. He's just taking round after round. The little T90 that could, yeah? That's another one. I think that's six. I mean, you can see where she took a front hit. You can see a rear hit right there. Barrel took a hit. Tracks her damage on the left side, but still kicking. You can see a little bit of damage on the uh, magazine. And that final hit, I think, just got right into the engine and disabled it. So that's where the turret's going to stay, but I think Blue Force is going to be able to take that sector, and then Blue Force is going to be able to come in from that other side. Op 4 still being slow to push in this group of reinforcements. I don't know why they're not pushing to the sectors right now. They see that one is contested. That should be an immediate push your things in. Maybe they see a vehicle right here and they want to take that. They got a Cormit launcher. They could use that for noob tubing, but... All right, I see what they're doing. They're going to basically take that to then go in with it. I can't tell if he fired the Cormit launcher or what, but... ay ay ay. Hey, Papaya. Dude, you got like nine kills this round. That was great to see with that crow system. You definitely were able to show off why I love the 50 cal crow system, man. It's very easy to rack up a bunch of kills with that thing, and I applaud you for doing so. Appreciate it, buddy. So you got Kremlin here doing his best to try to keyhole with that SVD. David AF trying to come in. Trying to kill Wheaton, but Fist runs into his bullets and knocks himself out. How, how nice of Fist to do that. David gets another knockout. All right, here we go. One of the fobs are taken, but Op4 could sweep back. We got a car now driving in. I swear to God, if they go in here and dismount instead of pushing right into the sector, noticing that one's been taken. All right, so Blue4 have a majority of that team knocked out. We could, see the, we could still see Op4 bounce back here. 
We need to see a second guy enter the sector. That'll start the timer. AT firing on their rear. Got Mafo here on three kills. There's the second one. He's trying to get hit on that one. Eh, got some. More AT firing into this compound. Three minute timer has begun. And that's it. Unless Op4 runs more people in, but I think they just lost that group. It's it's over. These guys have dismounted over here, but they have to get to the opposite side. It's I think it's GG. That's all she wrote. Overall, that round definitely went back and forth quite a bit. I think it was a good round overall. Uh, I wish there was a little bit of a better utilization with the Apache uh, that Blue 4 had. I see where they were going with it, but maybe they ran out of countermeasures as well. But again, I feel like if they just kept it in reserve and then brought it in later, it would have had a much easier time taking out like you know, the tank and the BMPs, but it... I guess it didn't matter in the long run, technically. You got Lolo now running around. All right, so you got some Blue 4 trying to move into the position here. Op 4 pushing in, some grenades being thrown. Not enough movement from the remaining Op 4 groups. And Op 4 can't t retake a sector once it's been captured. Yeah, that T90 took quite a beating, but it's also if you get the right AT position. Like, the Abrams are also supposed to be super tanky, but I think Zicky hit it in the perfect spot on the engine to cook it off. And Zicky would definitely know how to do that because he is one of the best players I've ever seen in Arma, but I digress. Um... And then you just see that T90 driving around. It took like six or seven AT shots. And I think Op4 just shot at their own dude. Andre could get in this tower and look over. He's going to go over the Hesco instead. Could catch Brossus over, but... Oh, Brossus gets a nice panic shot on him. Grenade goes down, and there's that sector capture. It's GG. Yeah, there were two M1A1s where they got sniped out early on. But that is it. All right. Blue Fort have won that match, guys. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Based on what I need to do for the remainder of the day, I'm going to be honest. I think I'm not going to cover the second round. I'm just going to go uh, catch a nap. We will be back tomorrow for Let's some on-the-ground stuff. We? Otherwise, that was, uh, that was a little tough to... I do like how it went back and forth, though. Some really nice air battles in the beginning, and then we had this. But overall, that was nice. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Go operate operationally. See you guys tomorrow. Otherwise, cheers, and have a good one.